2015. What a year to be a member of the Fern Creek Tigers wrestling team. Now, you guys have already saw Cole Dodd's review video, 2015 individual state champion and a member of their team state championship. We've also got our guest here today who can also say he was an individual state champion and on that 2015 Fern Creek team. Sir, if you would, tell us who you are. Uh, Jorge Vega, Russell 106 and 113. Uh, won a state championship 2013-2015 and a team state championship 2015. And, of course, your 2013 videos on the channel, 106 pounds. It's actually right uh, right above this one in the playlist. So, let's before we go to 2015, you, you're coming off of a state championship at 106 pounds. Coming into that junior year, uh, we like to ask guys that are returning, social media is a thing, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, all that's a thing. When you go into a gym, do people recognize you, who you are? Yeah. At school, uh, I was kind of like a little celebrity for for a year. Yeah. Um, and from, or Kentucky's not too big, so um, people at other schools kind of were saying stuff all year round. And, uh, yeah, pretty much – Everywhere out oh, here. I, I get it. And we met with um, Gabby Wilson. She was Fern Creek's uh, girl 285 state champion this year. Her review videos on the channel. And, of course, she won three um, of the Coaches Association state championships. And she won the KHSEA one this year. And in her video, uh, she said that people call her champ everywhere she goes. Champ. Champs. And we got champ in <laughs> class or, uh, you know, champs called a champ. And I was like, you know, that's cool that right now, currently, she's the only wrestling state champion that's that, that's attending uh, Fern Creek. And it's cool that you get that recognition because you should. Right. Wrestling is, and I've said it in so many videos, it's <clears throat> ad nauseum now, but wrestling is, for the most part, hid in practice rooms, hid in gyms on Saturdays. Very rarely do you get a crowd to come watch you and having your student body, your classmates recognize what you've done, re respect, you know, the effort you've put in and call you champ or, you know, Hey man, you know, what's up? You know, um, right. why can't you come over or like to, you know, do this with you or whatever that like when um, there's been so many analogies about like, Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson or uh, Floyd Mayweather, any of the MMA champions, your Conor McGregor's, your whoever is, people may not know who won the the Stanley Cup unless you're into hockey. People may not know who won the, uh, the, the Kentucky Derby unless you're into horse racing. But there's a very good possibility more people is going to know who the heavyweight champ is than who won the Kentucky Derby. They're right. going to know that. They're going to know this person is the heavyweight boxing champ or this person is the middleweight UFC champ or whatever it is. There's something about combative sports that people just want to gravitate to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially when you're uh, a 14 to 18 year old defiant male that thinks, you know, uh, come out on the mats and able to approve it every Saturday or every uh, time you go to a wrestling meet. But 2014, yeah. go, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just, it's funny because all the like football players and um, people that played all other sports, they would always, always say, like, what's up, champ, or state champ. Um, mainly because it's like a lot of people aren't familiar with wrestling. Yeah. So um, when they say, like, oh, you're 106 pounds, you can wrestle type of thing i just think it's funny or they're like oh you think you could take me down or whatever and i'm like why don't you come out for wrestling and uh you can try it out for yourself you know so yeah. um, it is pretty funny yeah no man i i can completely understand exactly where you're coming from 2014 <clears throat> you're a junior 113 pounds and the um 
the jump from 106 to 113 may not be seem like a lot of weight, but if you've never had to cut weight or you've never had to compete in weight classes, that can be a big jump. It, it really can. And I say that because um, you come in third place as a junior, but let's go over a few matches in your bracket here. In the quarterfinals, like you met your soon-to-be teammate in the semis the year before, you run into some guy named A.J. Bender from St. Xavier, and you beat him by a 9-4 to decision. You get to the semifinals, and you run into eventual four-time state champion Bryce Schaefer. Rest in peace to Bryce. Rest in peace, Bryce. Yep, rest in peace, absolutely. From Union Bye. County, and Bryce goes on to get a – 11 to 1 major decision over you. Now, of course, Bryce was a freshman then. There was no way to know how good he was going to be. But when you look over at the scoreboard and you see 11 to 1, the match is over with, were you upset? Did you kind of just take it in stride and say, I ran into somebody better? No, not really. Um, my junior year, I was, uh, it was kind of one of those things I was battling like, ups and downs i kind of wasn't really wanting to wrestle anymore mm -hmm. um and then throughout the season i was kind of like getting sick here and there um and then before the state tournament i didn't really feel the best um i slept i woke up like five minutes prior to the fight or to that match right but um not taking anything away from bryce because he was a heck of a wrestler Right. And they train like animals over there. So he, he for sure had, uh, but I wasn't completely myself, I would say. So um, I would have liked to made that match a little bit closer. Um, but yeah, he, he dominated me. No, I, I get it. And that's, that's why I just wanted to, you know, find out your side of the story on that, but you get to the third, fourth place match. And, you win a eight to three decision over Mason Smith of Walton Verona, and Mason goes on to become a 2018 state champion. Mason's review videos on the channel for those of you that are so inclined to go back and watch Mason's match. But you know, able to come back and get third place, maybe not the result that you wanted, but at least you're on the odd side of the podium. Um, you know, sometimes, like I said, sometimes it happens. Sometimes. Um, life gets in the way. Sometimes things happen that we just can't control. But you were able to make a uh, the best out of a situation that, like I said, maybe wasn't the outcome you wanted. Because of that strength maturity. And uh, in this case, not only is he looking at a senior across the mat from him, but also one of the state's best. I mean, Trey Blackwell, uh, State champion in 2012 at 113, a year ago at 120, and now he's moved up to 120. But 2015, though, oh, and before I move on, 2014, we mentioned it in your 2013 video. 2012, Fern Creek comes in as a team tied for 59th place. As a sophomore, of course, you win it in 2013, Fern Creek comes in 20th place. As a junior, 2014, Fern Creek comes in eighth place. Now, let's go to your senior year. Well, you know, you, you've said in a, a couple years, like your freshman year, junior year, um, really wasn't feeling it. What was it about your senior year that was just like, this is it. This is my year. This is our team's year. What was it, man? Man, I think it was just – the thought that I wasn't planning on wrestling in college. Uh, so I was kind of just thinking to myself, like, this is my last run. Mm -hmm. um, mainly because, like I said, my grades weren't there. And I was like, oh, I don't think I can do college. Um, I had a lot of uh, self-doubt. Um, and that's it kind of haunted me, really. Um, but... That was really it. I was like, I'm not going to wrestle anymore. Uh, so let's just go out the best I can. I, man, I completely understand. Now, before we talk about your bracket, 
when you're coming in as a senior, you've got you, Cole Dodd, and did you have to convince AJ to come over to Fern Creek? Was it like, hey, man, come join us? I don't want to wrestle you again. I didn't say a word to him, no, man. I, I'm, I think... I'm kidding. I, I'm, I'm just joking. No, dude. yeah, it's just I, – it's funny because I think – uh well growing up AJ was a part of the Optimus, uh from Creek Optimus for a little bit. I mean he he wrestled for a few teams, but he was over there for a bit. Um and outside of wrestling, me and AJ were pretty good friends um because um family members were friends and I got introduced to AJ and I was like, Oh man, he wrestles too. Mm -hmm. So we were kind of close. Um and we had a pretty solid team. We just had a few missing pieces. Yeah. Um, so I figured he was just like, man, we can do something special and um, came over. Now, as you're talking, I'm pulling up my calendar here. I just got an idea. I'm pulling up my calendar on uh, Windows. So that would have been October, October 15th. 2014 was a Wednesday. So we're going to say that Fern Creek started practice on that day because October 15th is the day you can begin practice. Officially school-sponsored, uh, that's all winter sports can begin on that day. When you go into the mat room on that first practice, you look around, you've been to the top of the mountain, you know you've got some solid, solid wrestlers in there. Do you look around and say, we have a state championship team here. Honestly, no, because our team was so – it was so up and down. Um, mm -hmm. Being at Front Creek, we have uh, – I feel like there's a lot of adversity mm -hmm. um, where, like, people's background, where they come from. Um, and so the – I think the biggest – uh, concern was if we would be able to um, wrestle hard together because mm -hmm. in individually we would have um, like good matches here and there but the team chemistry wasn't really all the way there until coach Hitchings kind of drilled the thought that we could be state champs that year so it was just Hitchings constantly in our ears like you guys got to figure it out like wrestle as a team um and that's really it it was just motivation through coach Hitchings I completely understand that man and that's a that's a great story and the um the, the reason I asked that question is uh we've asked several guys that have been on that wanted as an individual and also um, as a team, some of your Woodford County guys, some of your Union County, um, Isaac Knable at St. Xavier, we go on and on, but just I like to ask that question and get the responses because I um, don't remember what year it was, 2017, 2018, something to that effect. Um, I bought uh, my me and my dad bought him an early uh, Father's Day gift, the, um, the 1978 – University of Kentucky uh, basketball team who won the NCAA uh, had a uh, like a uh, forty year, forty one year, whatever it was, fifty year. Um, I guess it would have been fifty year um, meet and greet. There's only like two players that wasn't there. One of them had passed away, and the other one was Dwayne Casey, and he had to coach the Raptors that night in a ball game. So I guess it was the fiftieth anniversary. All the players that were still alive and were there. Coach Hall was there and got autographs and all that kind of stuff. And you got a, a Q and a session with the players and the coaches. And I asked, um, I asked coach Hall, I said, uh, coach, you know, um, I don't really play basketball. I said, I was on the wrestling team growing up in school. I referee wrestling, but what is something that a piece of advice you would like more coaches to know more athletes to know. And he, you know, Coach Hall was probably in his 80s then. He kind of laughed a little bit and chuckled. He said, son, you never know how you're going to win. And I was like, that's an excellent piece of advice, Coach. And there, 
if there's anything about that piece of advice that couldn't be more true, is watch a wrestling match. You never right. know how you're going to win. Never. Is the person going to reach back, you know, from the bottom? Are you going to hit them in a half? Are you, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? So I bring that story up to say, you never know how you're going to win a state championship as a team. Who's going to, you know, is somebody that shouldn't play is going to be in the state finals or somebody you think is going to be in the finals get beat, you know, have to drop out for an injury. So it's a, it truly is a team effort. It truly is awesome. to accumulate enough points to be on top of the mountain. So right. with that being said, 2015, you're a senior, 113 pounds. You come into the state final or state championship with a record of 45 and one. So you've had an absolutely phenomenal season coming in. You start off the tournament with a fall over Lonnie. Uselman from Newport, that's out of northern Kentucky. You win that by a fall, three minutes, 25 seconds. You get to the second round. You win. I When I read done this, I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know this. You win by a tech fall over Micah Irvin of Union County, 16 to 1. Oh, by the way, Micah goes on to be a two-time state champion, 2019 and 2020. So – yeah, it was just like, whoa, can't believe you you got to take fall over Micah Irvin. You get to the quarters, you're wrestling good friend of the channel and now current referee Austin Cook from St. Xavier. You win that by an eight to two decision. Austin goes on to get sixth place and he was in the 2017 uh, state finals, come up a little bit short that year, but nevertheless, he was in the finals. You get to the semis, you're wrestling Ryan Moore of Walton, Verona. You win that by a 7-1 to one decision. Ryan goes on to get third place. Oh, by the way, Ryan's a two-time state champion, 2017-2018. And, oh, by the way, Ryan, as of this filming, is a two-time NAIA national runner-up. So you've had a pretty good, uh, pretty good run there beating some dudes. Getting to the finals, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's funny. Um, shout out Rob Boston and Nathan Boston because uh, I feel that ETC at the time was like everyone's go-to practice. Like, I want to say it was kind of an invite-only type type of thing. Like all of the Team Kentucky kids, mm -hmm. um, but. Man, those practices and Rob Boston, heck of a coach, and they just brought me to like another level. Um, and really, I think that their coaching style, like the go, go, go mm -hmm. mentality, was kind of always um, my type of thing. So once I got with them, I kind of <clears throat> just found that next step. So no, I get it. And the um so you're back in the finals as a senior. You have one more match as a Fern Creek Tiger. Knowing that you've been there before, knowing this is it. Win, lose, or draw. This is your last match as a Fern Creek Tiger. After you get the decision win over Ryan, what's going through your head? Uh I was pumped, man. I, I um <clears throat> I believe I wrestled Ryan uh, earlier in the year, and uh, I think I beat him by like two or one or two, maybe three. Mm -hmm. um, I never wrestled Brady Wells, but I was kind of one of those guys where I've seen two of the other people wrestle in the bracket, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is their yeah. go-to. Um, mm -hmm. I match up very well with this person. So after I beat Ryan Moore um, – I was kind of like, all right, let's go. Like, I got this. Um, that's really about it. I had a game plan um, of kind of just pressure, pressure. And that was really it. No, I, I get it. And we, you know, we've done videos with uh, Ben Barton. I'm trying to think who all is. Cole Dodd. We've done several 2015 videos. Jordan Blanton from Johnson Central. Um, 
when for those that don't know the state tournament got postponed i believe it was like two and a half weeks cause of weather yeah and we go cole kind of walked us through a little bit in his video but you know were you pretty close to 113 was you having to cut a lot of weight because two and a half weeks man having to maintain a certain weight that can be tough I don't think so. Honestly, I think I was always kind of under uh, 113. Um, I was never the type of person to want to cut. Um, mm -hmm. So I was kind of, I think, we. I believe we got a two-pound weight allowance. Yes, that's maybe. correct. Uh, so um, I think I was maybe four pounds under or five pounds wow. under maybe. Um, or I was like right on the dot. So I was never one to have to cut much until I got to college. And then, uh, then, uh, that's when I was really cutting. Oh, I get it. And you, you alluded to it earlier, but you're in the finals. You're wrestling Brady Wells of Campbell County. And we'll talk a little bit about Brady after the video and the 2015 video. I searched, I looked, I called, I emailed, I sent um, telegrams like SOS, tell, you know, like on the Titanic. I reached yeah. out to everywhere I could reach out to. I called everybody. And finally, I contacted um, a person at the KHSAA, and lo and behold, they had it. They just didn't realize it. And I'm not saying it was their fault. They just It was mislabeled, and they, done, they put it in, and sure enough, there it was. And the day – that I found or they found out about it. I ordered the copy and it showed up a couple days later. And I was, I think I sent you like a little clip of it. You, Cole, Austin Myers, Benny, uh, Keegan Duncan. We've done Keegan's, I believe. Yeah, we've done Keegan's. So it was good that we was able to get this video because there's so many good wrestlers on it and so many good matches. So we're going to pull up your 2015 video here, man. I believe that's Bryce running out again. Rest in peace to Bryce Schaefer, um, four-time state champion. Now, did I – refresh my memory. Did I send you this video or no? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, good. I knew I sent you 2013, but I didn't – I couldn't recall if I sent you 2015 or not. So, yeah. enough of us talking about it. Jorge, man, let's watch it. Maybe the let's do it. Of a gymnast, and then that tactical thinking of a of a chess player. Man, if we can combine those four, you've got a champion. And I think there you come running out, man. Encompass all those attributes. They really do. They and really on the do. And I've case you're wondering, and, and uh, preach to my kids. Long time coach at Woodford County. Link. So if uh, Rusty Parts is commentating along with a guy at, named Dick Simpson. Pick that up. There's Brady. The coach on the opposing team's gonna, gonna coming try out to wrestle against our weakness. So to be able to have that combination, man, you're Jorge Vega of Fern Creek, the number one ranked kid in the state at 113. And so it's funny because uh, prior to the uh, state tournament, there was a, there was like a Forbes, I don't know, maybe it's on Kentucky Wrestling where all the coaches are able to like comment who they think is going to win and um, stuff like that. So there was a big talk on who was going to win that year at 113. And I never got on it um, until before this. And I was just looking at the comments and um, I was like, man. I got this. I want to prove them wrong type of thing. Oh, yeah. So and I was highly motivated coming into here. We'll, we'll talk about that bracket here just in a minute. So right out of the gate, man, Brady's on the attack going for that ankle pick, but you're not having any of it. We still have not got the updated standings as of yet. And you get a pretty easy take down there. Two. I'm actually setting to the – to the right of the scoreboard here from this vantage point. Um, I come down that year and work the table. Of course, Fern Creek, Rusty. Now that orange singlet, Bub, is that your all's final singlets then or your final singlets or was that your, your everyday one or? Uh, 
regular program? I don't I don't really remember. I believe we kind of alternated uh every weekend. The, uh, I got you champ at Fern Creek. Uh, uh, back in the day. Yeah, I was really wanting to wear like a throwback singlet, but we couldn't find any. Years. I, I get you. Coach Hitchings. Yeah. <clears throat> and his wrestlers up two nothing with forty seconds to go in first period. You kind of abandon that head and arm there, that head that front headlock, so you well, kind of go back on your feet. Back to their feet, two to one. Yeah, I don't, I never really liked being in a front headlock position uh, because I don't like. I didn't feel comfortable with people grabbing my elbows. Yep. Um, so my go-to that year was kind of like a snap down, go behind, uh, or, um, a go behind off of a bad shot. Mm -hmm. Um, I was really big on reattacks, elbow binds. For the first period. You've got, um, you're just so everybody knows for the record, you've got Garrett pickle on the whistle. And you've got Eric yeah, Friddle as his assistant. Period. So two good so, friends of mine, two pretty good refs. For Vega, the End of the period. And both wrestlers experience at this level. It looks like you deferred and he's going to take down. Brady Wells, just a sophomore figure, uh, Rusty, that he has a couple of more opportunities um, down the road for him. But for Vega, this is Ed, a senior. Yeah, yeah, and and again, Vegas been there now, to be a, a a state champ. And there you go, nice and return and there. He's got a lot of showing a little experience. bit of strength he on that lift and return. And keeps that arm as he takes him down and puts him on his back, so he's got back points and got an opportunity to. Mm -hmm. this. Well, Wells comes up strong. Nice, nice move there. When when Brady gets he to his feet right there, were you thinking, position. oh my gosh, I just gave up a so four two you know, somebody on their back? No, so it's funny because. Uh, after filling filling Brady uh, out, he was really, I feel like uh, he was a more of a technical kind mm -hmm. of wrestler, um, and I kind of wanted to keep wrestling, so I didn't. I went for the half, but I was okay with continuing to wrestle the match. I get it. I understand, man. I was like, this is my last go, man. Getting into yeah. Rusty Campbell. Uh, County and the Fern Creek fans. In Vega. There, and Vega. This is the video. There's some errors in, or right some glitches yes. in the, the actual broadcast. Six so don't adjust Vega. your phones there, fans. Halfway through so you've got, period. I don't want to say easy because easy's maybe not the best word, but you've got two pretty good takedowns on him. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say the same move, but pretty close to the same thing. Yeah, so it's got to make you feel good. Like I like I said um, earlier, is I was a big reattack person mm -hmm. um, at the high school level. I feel that many wrestlers take bad shots, um, so I was kind of always thinking Vegas. if I stay in good position. Hey Vega. Um, Stop him with my head. The reattack will be there. And um, my go behind was kind of just like a misdirection go behind. I would fake a go behind one way and go the other. I, I get, man, I get it. And it's your choice. You're up. In the past you take down. Years, you got to wrestle to that final buzzer because oh, we saw last year two to matches determined inside the final two or three seconds. Yes, indeed. Yes, you. You go until you, you, the guy taps you on the shoulder saying it's over. The, um, Vega you get a reversal the right there. Spin. So up to an eight, eight to two lead here. Eight so. to two, third Looking period. Impressive is Vega. And again, I think being a state champ, uh, great advantage to him being in this, this uh, atmosphere. You give him, right, you cut him. Right, right. Shoot in again, nice outside sweep there. For Vega. In the finish, finish, period. finish. Oh, no, Getting their takedown. And Coach Hitchings back there trying to wrestle it for you. Been very so I believe at um I know that the the state championship was um already secured mm -hmm. before this, but 
Another I don't think we knew 100%. This is what happened. Um, so at that time, I think that's why he was like neutral, yeah, neutral. And you just um, leave yourself open. To but I'm not sure. A lot of no, I get it. And take down. when you talk about championship, forward, the, you know? the team yeah. championship, which we'll yeah, talk we'll, about we'll that here in just a little bit after um, the go. ceremonies and everything conclude for this video. Yeah, at this point, for um, Wells, you've got to come the, up with um, a move to put him on his back. You're so out here. You're getting some takedowns. Like you're getting your cutting. Takedown's not going to um, help him. So you have to be knowing that the seconds are precious. Knowing that they're winding down on your high school career. Is it just? Let's just have a little bit of fun. 15 seconds left. Uh, Honestly, I was – I don't really know what I was thinking, man. I kind of was just in the groove, kind of yeah. – um, I feel like anxiousness plays a really big role in how someone wrestles. And uh, when they're when they're feeling it, they just keep going. Right. And right there, you win it by a 14 to 5 major decision over Brady. You become a two time state champion. And you can see Fern Creek got their, uh, got your name painted on their chest and everything. So you can tell the fans or the cheering section was into it. You do a backflip. Was that uh, just on the cusp right there, man? That was on the fly. I was like, I didn't know what I was, wanted to do. You done a good job with it. And of course, this video has the uh, the so, medal ceremony. Now the awards presentations for the 106 pound. And class. while we're getting to the medal ceremony, let's talk real quick about. Who all was in that 2015 113-pound bracket? Eight wrestlers on the podium. You had Micah Irvin goes on to be a two-time state champion. Ryan Moore goes on to be a two-time state champion. So Dallas Auctionbein from North Harden goes next year, 2016 120-pound state champion. To the sport in so many ways. Oh, by the way, and most outstanding wrestler, to make it Tucker Hurst to the podium. from Woodford County, who was a 2015 or 2014 state champion at 106. So you, that bracket was loaded, man. Absolutely loaded. Yeah. I believe um, my bracket and maybe maybe AJ's bracket, 130, was it 132, 138, something like that? I think it I this believe, year it was 132, I believe. Yeah, I believe those two brackets were, were pretty stacked. Mm -hmm. You know, I always told my kids if we had – if we had 10 state placers, we would win a state title. Of course, so here's the medal ceremony, man. You're, you're sitting over you there off to the side in that in the little chair, knowing this, you know, no kids in the I've done it. It's got to feel good, right? Kids finish yeah. Third through eight. That's in this is Tucker right here. Of course, up. Tucker's 2014 and, you know, videos on the channel. Those wrestlers who finished third and fourth and uh, something, I think, uh, for the folks who don't follow wrestling. I think it still hadn't hadn't hit me just because I think I was just sitting there kind of just looking at everybody. All of these kids have their minds and hearts set on yeah. being in the finals. There's Brady getting his medal. But the and here you come. Picking yourself up. Coming back through Russellbacks, and it's a long road to get back and to third place. I've had kids lose the very first right there, man, the getting that medal. And come all the way back and finish third. And man, you know that takes hard. You're on top that of the world. Sure you're in a grind for the grind. second time. Well, those are the young men right there who finished in the top eight at 113 pounds in the top step of the podium. Jorge Vega. Senior from Fern Creek High School, finishing his senior year 54 and one, and uh, graduating from Fern Creek as a two-time state champion. Just an absolutely phenomenal career, man. And the best part is, it's not over because right. Fern Ready Creek, 2015 state champions, pounds, and we have Bobby Pointer of Moore High School. That's right now, and the season, the long, grueling. You guys accumulated 158.5 team points. Of, uh, Union County was second just for the with 153 points. So, you guys 
that that they've been through claim top spot to pay off it's uh that's that's what and i love to see you guys run for that big trophy so many teams take take your place on the podium only one team to take that take yeah that. honestly honestly winning watching cole watching cole win his state championship was a minor sport way better than me winning and uh because i i grew up with cole and definitely and you know what i um he him and his mom were always there for me and he always led by example um and he was such a hard worker he was one of those guys that yeah, I mean, it's showed up every single day, no matter how he felt. Uh, and then winning the state championship, that was like the icing on the cake. Uh, yeah, that was way better than both of the championships that I won. What's so cool is these families are together. That blue screen you saw there, guys, that was part of the broadcast. That was not your phone messing up. Uh, this is third. This is Fern Creek's third state championship, 1975, 1984, and in 2015. Absolutely, you know, a great scene right there. There's Cole right there walking away. I believe I see you right there. And again, congratulations to Fern Creek. That's where this one ends. Now let's let me real quick go back over. Where Fern Creek come from team wise. <laughs> 2012, tied for 59th place. 2013, 20th place. 2014, eighth. And then 2015, first place. Team state champions. So in your high school career, the team went from tied from 59th to state champions. I don't know if that's ever happened before. If it is, I'd like to see what school done it. But I can't imagine – I was trying to do some research, and I really couldn't find, like, only, um, like, the 80s, 90s, 70s, 60s, they only had, like, the top ten placers. But it seems like every single year was, like, the same teams, maybe in a different order or whatever, and it was the same cast of characters, the same teams, I should say, winning it. So I think you guys made history in a four-year span – going from tied to 59th to state champions. Yeah, Just an absolutely awesome. phenomenal performance by everybody that year from Fern Creek. Um, it's It's got to feel good to know you've done it twice individually and then you were able to help your team do it, you know, bring, bring the big uh, piece of wood home, right? Yes, sir. I, I get that, man. I, I, I completely, completely get it. Now, you alluded to it earlier, but you thought your wrestling career was over. But little did you know you was going to be wrestling in college. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, I took a year or two off, uh, mainly because I tried to get into Lindsey Wilson, um, and I wasn't able to because of my grades. Um, I really couldn't get – offers from anywhere um because of my grades so y'all gotta get good grades because school comes first for sure um but i got a call from uh chris Frigi. uh he was over at lindsey wilson for a little bit and then he started a program over at cloud county which is in um concordia kansas um i wrestled there for a year but not a full year um the team really wasn't all in. Um, it was kind of like we had, I don't know, seven or eight wrestlers at the end of the season. Um, I really didn't have a, a wrestling partner. Uh, mm -hmm. I was wrestling the 45-pounder uh, majority of the year, um, and I would wrestle Fregi. So I wrestled probably my best wrestling at the first two tournaments. Um I was on the verge of hitting my peak, uh, and I, I got hurt. I hurt my back, and after I hurt my back, I kind of was just not all the way there. Mm -hmm. um, I wrestled a few All-Americans. Uh, I believe I wrestled um, this kid, uh, Mascarenas. It's a, they're a brother of – they're like two brothers, and I want to say that he placed uh, like third or something. 
So I lost to him by one. So I was doing fairly well. Um, but the biggest, um, like setback was not being a part of a team that was like, everyone wanted to contribute, like contribute. I get it. Um, and that's why, that's why Union County so elite, Woodford so elite. Um, because once you build a community and you're part of a team that everyone has the same goal, um, it makes things 10 times easier. So yep. after I got done wrestling, I wanted to like continue. Like I still mm -hmm. to this day would like to try it one more time because I always think like, man, I had, I had so much potential and, um, I wanted to see what I could do at my full um, because I, I mean, I could compete with almost anybody I feel like. Mm -hmm. And uh, my strong point was on my feet. So I was like, man, I can take almost anyone down on my feet. Just need to get through these injuries. So I don't know. No, but, I, I get it, man. I, I do. I, I completely understand. And, um, that's um that's the thing about this this series is I don't want to say that um well let me let me let me dial that back. We don't go around you know advertising to the world where or those guys those now we can say boys and girls that have won state championships, but we don't go around all the time wearing our medals around our necks or wearing our letterman jackets outside of school, Every, unless it's like a reunion or something to that effect. And, or uh, you go to a wrestling meet, state tournament, whatever it is. But when you look at what you learn from wrestling is those lessons go with you forever. They, they will go with you forever. And, Part of the lessons that you learn in life is, or from wrestling, I should say, that you can transfer over into life is, like you said, I may not have given this best, this opportunity, this endeavor, my best effort, but I know what my best effort is. I want one more shot at starting a business. I want one more shot at um, whatever it is, um, coaching. Um, right. Starting, starting to whatever, whatever life throws at you, because you know what your best is, and you can look back and say, you know what, I didn't give that my best. You give me six months, I guarantee you, I will be nobody will be able to touch me when it comes to sales or, um, you know, whatever profession you're in, whatever, whatever it is in life. And I think that's why I like this doing this channel so much is. I know what my best is. Right. And every video I put out, I make sure that I'm giving my best. 100%. My best. And I I know you guys feel the same way. And if I'm not happy with a video, I'll contact the person. Hey, we need to go back or we need to refilm this. Or I don't like, you know, this was bad or whatever. And it's it's something that never leaves you. Or at least it hasn't left me. Now, I never was a state champion. Heck, I never even made it to the state tournament. But I have that desire. I have that life lesson of I know what my best is. I'm not going to settle for anything less. It may never happen again on a wrestling mat. But I know I can give my best to whatever I do. And I know what my best is. And it sounds like, you know, you having a desire to, want to give it one more shot, one more, um, one more way in, if you will. That that competitive fire still in you too, man. I I wish I could. Now I'm getting too old, but uh, yeah. I um, I still, I still know. I I feel like it's one of those things where I can sit back and be like, I'm okay with it because mm -hmm. the cards that I were like the cards that I was dealt, um, I just didn't play my hand right, honestly, and that's for the younger people in high school um going through or battling adversity i feel that um use like the support system to really 
grind it out whether you like it or not because a lot of the things that you hear growing up um i mean it's not bad advice you just mm. you're young we're young or i was young and i just really didn't listen so if you listen to the people around you they're just trying to help you uh man that's a that's a excellent piece of advice. It, it truly is. Now, before we wrap this one up and put a bow on it, I'd like to give everybody the opportunity. Um, do you have anything you'd like to say, add, take away, shout outs, anything like that you'd like to say before we wrap this one up? Man, not really. I'm I'm pretty content with the video. Well, actually, okay. yeah. Uh I will I do want to shout out um basically all the wrestling community. Uh while I was wrestling, um, growing up, I feel like the biggest and best thing you can do is on the off season, go to the rooms that have the best guys. Um, because I know if it weren't for the cars, Boston, uh, Shirky, mm -hmm. um, man, all these top wrestlers in the state that want to do good things in wrestling mm -hmm. they wrestle the best guys they they travel to other states to find the best competitions so they you, when you want to win you do what it takes uh completely understand man and i think that's a good place to end the video or hey man thanks for being here thanks for doing both videos i'm glad we was able to get with you um like we said in your other video we'll say it here now we wish you and your um, soon-to-be um, spouse the uh, the best in life. And we know people are going to enjoy getting to watch your videos and hear your story. Um, and I'm glad we were finally able to get it lined up, bro. So I really appreciate it. But, guys, that's all that we have. And now we can add the word um, girls to, the, to our ending um, little tagline here. We will see you guys and girls on the mats.